All right, here we are, NAB. You know the drill, all the new gear. Gonna be doing a little bit of a different format this year, uh, more so live. We'll do it live! I probably won't be able to get to all the stuff that I normally cover just because I have a job right in the middle of NAB, so I probably won't be able to explore the entire floor like I normally do, but let's go take a look. Alright, elephant in the room, Sony Burano. It's funny because actually a lot of uh, Sony reps have told me that they've seen my video. Uh, just everyone here in general has told me that they've seen my video. And as critical as I was of the Sony Burano, I still actually do still love that camera because for me, again, it does exactly what I need it to. But I wanted to stop by the Sony booth just to see all of the kind of different accessories that were available. So you basically have Every manufacturer here kind of showing off all of their third-party accessories. I'll be doing kind of a separate Brano accessories video showing off all the things that I ended up buying. And really quick, I wanted to slide in here. This was one of them. So Mid49 has come, been coming out with some killer, killer stuff. This is just one of them. This is their viewfinder extension cable. So Sony actually shared a lot of the information for this design and shared it with Mid49 so that they could get this extension cable done. And I almost think that this should basically come standard with the camera because even if you look at one of Sony's stock builds here, if you look at the viewfinder cable way at the back of the camera, you can see how stretched it is all the way reaching all the way down here. And that's not even using the included viewfinder bracket either. And again, with this port kind of terminating on the far side of the monitor. So again, if you're doing any kind of shoulder work, I think this is an, just an absolute must. I was really hoping to get a look at their also new power plate for power distribution, which is also another thing I pre-ordered, um, but I think they probably took it, so I haven't seen it here at the Sony booth yet. So like I mentioned, um, a lot of Sony reps have told me that they've actually seen my video, so I've gotten a lot of feedback off of it in terms of, you know, they've communicated to me that all of that feedback has been passed along the food chain and all of that feedback has been processed. And they have all that information, but I think, again, unfortunately at this point, it might be too late in the stage of the production process being that like these cameras are literally already shipping and a lot of the kind of weird quirks with this camera are just, unfortunately, hardware limitations. And again, like I said, a lot of those limitations do have workarounds. I think a lot of us are just upset that they're just workarounds in general. They have all the feedback, so they're listening. They're definitely listening, but it's just a matter of what they can do given the provided hardware at this point. So this is probably what excites me way more than the Pixis um, for a few reasons. One, I kind of actually really love the idea of having the screen on the AC side because I'm doing a lot of shows with a bunch of cameras and then a lot of times my ACs are needing to access the camera settings. But the cool thing is is that as this menu is up, it's completely independent of what's going on on the operator side. So while the AC is on the other side changing settings, the operator can also at the same time be changing other settings if they wanted to. So I think that's really, really cool. Another really cool thing is the media. So this one's currently empty, but it kind of uses these new M.2 caddies. So it uses two uh, PCIe SSDs. Um, what I'm told is that there are, I think, two four terabytes and they're striped in RAID 0. I think my big takeaways are, one, that the viewfinder port is at the front, Sony. So I'm here at the DJI booth, who's actually the sponsor of today's video. And they're showing off creative solutions for nearly every shooting scenario that you might find yourself in whether you're a content creator or a professional in the industry, which is super cool. There's been a lot of interest in the Focus Pro system, which I actually recently did a review on. And it's super cool because you can basically adapt it to any camera build that you're using. And I admittedly vastly underestimated actually how cool that system is. They're showing off everything from car rigs to gimbals to drones to jibs and even have a little setup in the color suite. So let's take a look. All right, so obviously DJI is showing off all of their new gimbals. This is the RS4. This is probably one of my new favorite additions because it kind of trickles down a lot of the benefits from the RS4 Pro into the smaller RS4. And you can't really beat the size, especially for smaller, you know, smaller end corporate work where you're just using a Miller's ca camera. And the big kind of noteworthy feature is just being able to take this off the base plate 
and then go straight into vertical mode because we all know how important Instagram is nowadays. So it's really cool being able to natively do that and not require an extra vertical bracket or anything like that. And so with something this lightweight and this powerful and with all the optional pro accessories with the RS8 port that's now available on the side, it's a pretty solid, pretty solid solution. So this here is the new Focus Pro, and this is probably what I've been getting the most questions on. So it's basically a hand grip, and you can control your Focus motors directly from the hand grip, which is super cool. But the kind of neat pony trick is that you can also plug in your LiDAR module to the hand grip, and then also have autofocus for your manual Cine lenses. So here we have, obviously, a mini LF. I've already actually brought this thing out on a few jobs where I've had to pull focus on myself. And so it is super nice and being able to just push one button here and then engage autofocus using the LiDAR module right up top is, is super cool. So I really enjoy having this kind of control and honestly, I kind of, again, like I mentioned before, vastly underestimated how actually useful this system is. And so I'm actually gonna be going on a dock for the next week over at the Sphere and I'll be using this exact setup on a zoom lens on my Mini LF. But the really standout feature is that kind of no matter what camera you're actually using, you still get all the benefits of using DJI's new Focus Pro. So also here that hasn't been announced yet is this new power station, which is super cool because I use different power stations as kind of faux block batteries for my cameras all the time. So this is also another solution that's here for DJI. This is the DJI Power 1000, so basically 1000 watt hours and it can power my Alexa for about a full eight hours. And the kind of noteworthy feature about this guy is that it can fast charge from zero to 100 in about 70 minutes, which is pretty insane. So you can literally just plug this in at lunch or even in the morning if you forgot to charge it. I've literally done that before. I've shown up on set, forgot to charge my power station, plugged it in you know, as we're setting up for the first shot and it's full before the first shot. So that's really cool that this charges within 70 minutes. And it's also super quiet. And another thing that I really appreciate is that right on the front here are two dual USB-C outputs and they can output at 140 watts. So that's basically getting you a fast charge for a full-size 16-inch MacBook Pro. And yeah, I think this is super cool. Another thing that's kind of also included with this specifically is that it can fast charge DJI batteries for their drone line. So if you have a Mavic, you can insert a special plug and it'll fast charge your DJI battery. So when you're out in the wild and you need a extra power solution, this has got you covered. What's going on, man? How are you? <laughs> What's up, man? Um, so what do we got here, Ian? You know, we got ourselves a very simple Kodak conversion off of the D-Log. Mm -hmm. So basically what I looked at when I looked at this footage is I saw that we had a lot of really bright blue neon, a lot of really bright red, and uh, decided that obviously it's clear. They're looking for a John Wick Blade Runner style look. So we went and maximized on it, you know what I mean? It just went full send. When full send, it's it's got a nice poppy look. The image is great. Our hero stands out from the background. She's got a nice presence to her. And she's even got some actual skin tones going on when we get closer to that white light. And I see this is just ProRes 422. It's not even Quad 4. So That's correct. You must have a good amount of flexibility here with the, with the footage. And this is D-Log. That is correct. And that's what I was going to say is D-Log is incredibly flexible. They're able to pull some really, really amazing like highlights and roll off from just something as simple as this. And as you saw with the way that it looked from where we were, right? Like, that's all capable through uh, through DJI. Very, uh, very, very happy with D-Log. It, it is capable of some really surprising results. Well, it's also interesting that like most of DJI's product line includes some sort of 10-bit functionality. So, absolutely. You know, what what do you think? What do you think here? Well, you know, having absolutely zero context, I think whatever Rob has just said is probably only 80% right because there's always 20% chance of um, him being completely full of it. So I'm just saying, you know, knowing very little about anything, that's just, that's, that is exactly the way I think you should take it. And I'll record that on as many DJI devices as I need to. Perfect. And he'll record it in 10 bit and give it to Ian. Also another really cool kind of application here at the color suite is the DJI Power 1000 what looks like being used as like a UPC. So 
I assume if the power goes out, then this will kick in and kind of keep supporting everything needs to do and, and let Ian keep doing his work. So kind of another cool use case that you can use with this uh, power station. So also here at DJI is this 10 year timeline of the history of the Ronin, which is super cool. I've been using the RS series gimbals since the very first one, the Ronin S, and I've basically had every single one since then, the RS2, RS3, and now the RS4. And it's cool seeing how DJI has kind of implemented their technologies from all the way to the Ronin 4D and have had all that trickle down into things like the Osmo and the Focus Pro and now being able to use their LiDAR on kind of any camera system you want. So it's super cool seeing DJI do their thing and special thanks again to DJI for sponsoring this portion of the video. So I'm here at Core and they're showing off their new Powerbase Edge snaps and then the reason they call them snap is because they snap together with magnets and it's pretty secure. I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't, you know, actively go out of my way to try to lose the connection, but that being said, it, they are very secure. Now, these are your basic kind of brick battery, but the interesting thing about them is that they don't have any kind of integrated gold mount or V-mount kind of style backing. And so the real design here is that one, they snap together, so you can, I did it backwards, they snap together and they also, will offer this cheese plate which is really cool so you can put this either on the bottom of your camera or even like right here like they have on a Burano handle and then you can just snap this in and then hold your batteries that way and once they're snapped together all of the power passes through so you can actually hot swap so if you're using one battery uh, or if you're using two batteries like this and then the first one starts dying you can pull this one off it'll start pulling from this battery and then you can put on a fresh one on the top and then just keep going that way. And so the kind of really big feature about this kind of battery are these new PD Pro ports. And so these ports are basically USB-C ports, but kind of an evolution of the DTAP style connectors that we're kind of really used to seeing. So at launch, they're basically offering all these different kinds of cables, all the basic standard cables that you would find, like a two pin Limo or a three pin Fisher. And so basically you can take one of these cables, you can plug it in the port. And so the different colors actually denominate kind of um, how much output it can actually deliver. The one idea that I kind of have for this product at least, so you have this cheese plate, which is really cool. And so you can see it mounted here on this Burano. And just by looking at it, just by spending you know a few minutes here, I almost envisioned myself getting rid of this entire back side of the camera. So no matter if I'm on a Verano or my Mini LF, I can just chop this whole thing off and not use a power plate at all. So because this doesn't really have an integrated battery plate at all, it just basically mounts via this. I'm normally running some sort of cheese plate on the side of my camera. So I could mount this directly to the side of my camera and just have my battery solution right here, super slim, low profile, and then run one of these PD Pro connectors. So this is just a PD Pro to USB-C. So put this on the underside, and since it's bi-directional, I can flip it. And then if you say this was a four pin XLR, um, you can just plug this straight into your camera and power your camera. Super slim line solution, which I find really, really captivating. So this is super cool. But the one thing that just made me my mouth drop when I first saw it is actually how you charge them. So obviously they're called snap. So you can see here, all you need is one USB-C cable, cables that we already have, and then you can literally just start stacking them and they charge all the way through. And so just having something as easy and slim and as effective as this, especially like when you think about traveling, bringing, not even bringing a charger because we all bring USB-C cables for our laptops or for our phones. These USB-C ports actually also support power delivery. So if you needed to charge your laptop or anything like that, you totally could. The green one supports 90 watt outs and then the black one on the bottom supports 45 watt. So super cool. And again, just plug them all in off of one USB-C cable, a cable that we already travel with and charge all of your up to four however many batteries just off that one cable. So uh, to my understanding, I think it'll charge uh, the lowest level first, and then once they're all at the same level, then they'll all charge kind of concurrently at the same time. So these are super interesting. I'm really excited to see where Core goes with these. And actually, I'm kind of 
really interested in picking some of these up for my rig. So I'm also here at Cordback, who is actually the sponsor of this portion of the video, and I just want to show you some of the new things that they've got going on. Some things that I'm really excited about. You all know that I just absolutely love and adore these cute little pouches that you can use for just about anything. So new to NAB is actually new different colors. So we have white, we have red, we have a lovely kind of OD green, which is probably my favorite color. I love these. And it turns out that they're kind of making some of these camo colors because it turns out like uh, military and police forces are actually using these, which I think is pretty cool. So another thing that I think is really cool is these kind of smaller sizes. So these are called the fused size bags, and these are great obviously for media or if you have small bolts or small tools, you can obviously fit them in here. Another really cool thing is that they're stackable, so you obviously have a hard side on the back, soft side on the front, so if you wanted, you could easily stack two of them together, just like so, and keep this really compact, so kind of a really slim line solution. Another thing that's new is this new back that you can fit in basically most uh, Pelican, Nanook, kind of, they have a solution for most hard case brands. So this just Velcros onto the back and is basically a soft side with Molly webbing, which is cool. So if you wanted to add in your own Molly buckle there. And with these fused minis, you can just attach them right to the back. Another really cool thing that I also think is really neat is this LED saber. So it's basically just an LED light that can strap to this new backing. And the cool thing is that you can kind of change the colors depending on if you want to signify, obviously one, it just looks cool, but two, if you wanted to signify that, okay, this case is green and ready to go, it, you can kind of cycle through different colors. And you also have a bottom color too, and you can cycle through here. So if it's dark and you need to access and work inside your case, you can do that, really cool. But I think the one standout feature for me is this new kind of inventory management system. So at some point, Cordbag is going to start selling these NFC. And so this one works just right on for cables. So if you have a specific like Alexa cable or a viewfinder cable or some kind of really expensive cable, or any cable for that matter, you can put these on. Or you can get some of these, which are basically just NFC tags. And there's going to be a new app where you can scan the NFC tag and you can kind of organize it however you want, whether you want to scan a specific tag for an entire case. And from there, the entire contents of the case will be laid out in the app. So when you're prepping for a job, you can scan a, scan a tag and then from there see what everything is supposed to be in that case. Or you can go the opposite way. Say you have one empty case and you're trying to prep for a job. You can scan each cord bag and with its contents and start adding it to your case. And then from there, you'll know exactly what's in that specific case. And then from there, you can give that to your AC and they'll have a little bit more of a better idea of managing all their equipment. Because I'm on shows where I'm managing nine or so different cameras and my ACs have hard enough time you know, figuring out where this one specific cable goes. So being able to kind of help streamline that is super, super helpful. So the NFC technology is really cool because they're gonna come in kind of multiple form factors. You have these stickers, which you can actually just put right onto your Pelican case and all that same technology works the same. So you don't have to have anything sticking out or anything. You can easily just adhere it to kind of whatever surface you want. So that's really cool. You obviously have the kind of Velcro that you can attach right to the cord pouch. You have another one that's designed specifically for cables, which is really cool because sometimes we buy really expensive cables and we don't want to lose them. And then this other really cool one is like this kind of um, kind of keychain, keylet kind of looking thing where you can also just hang it off of whatever and kind of keep track of it that way. Also new is a little bit more of a cost effective uh, cord pouch. These are um, actually, believe it or not, a little bit cheaper than the traditional cord pouches. This is a half brick. They also have a full brick. So it's a little bit boxier and it doesn't have all the kind of traditional bells and whistles that you'd find on a traditional cord pouch, but it is a little bit more cost effective and a little bit easier to access. So another product that I like and I use a lot are the Molly buckles. So I'll just attach this right to my backpack and that way I can just carry anything off of these. But one thing that's new with these kind of upgraded versions are that they're kind of magnetic. So all I have to do is attach it like that and it's secure. And the only way to release it is actually 
to push the release in the back. So even though it's magnetic, it's still secure. So it's almost like a Molly quick release, like a magnetic quick release. So I think it's super interesting. Come on. So it's no secret that I absolutely adore all of these little pouches because they're super functional and I, again, literally use them on every single job. So they're actually running a spring sale right now through the end of April and you can get up to 30% off on their website directly at cordbag.com. But if you use my code, is that a red on checkout, you can get an extra 15% off your entire order. So get a rise, check out Cordbag. So I'm here with Sarah and Blazar is showing off their new Kato full frame lenses. So can you tell us a little bit about these two times anamorphics? Absolutely, I'm holding one right now. This is the 85T28 Kato. Um, as you can see, it's super small. We actually had Josh come over yesterday and put it on a Ronin 40. That is how small. They are the lightest uh, full frame two times anamorphic lenses on the market. It kind of just seems like between the Remus and the Kato's, it's just like, kind of really just dependent on which camera kind of format you're yeah. kind of leaning on shooting on. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we have a myriad of cameras on our ship. Because they're both full today. frame. Yeah. So it's not like you're having to choose between Super 35 or, exactly. or that. And especially when you talk about most 16 by 9 sensors, when you're doing a 1.5 squeeze that's like what, 266. Yeah, and So exactly. it's a little bit easier to, 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 get to, to, to get to the 240. You're not losing too much. So yeah, again, if you're on a DCI or, or a 16 by 9 sensor, you definitely want to maybe consider the Remus because it's got a lot of character. You're not really losing much uh, just because it's a 1.5 D squeeze doesn't mean it doesn't have character. Uh, we've got a lot of barrel distortion. I have one up behind me on our V Raptor here and it looks amazing. But if you did want to put the Kato on a 16 by 9 sensor, I think that gets you like a three, yeah. three and a half. Crazy. 3.5 or something crazy wide so and not to say that you can't do it I mean you can put these on a super 35 sensor too uh, it just depends on what your final output is and, and what character you want to do so I would say when you put the Kato on the the V Raptor or like an FX6 um, you're just gonna lose a little bit of that like barrel distortion that you're getting on the edges whereas if you, if you put it on a 3 by 2 sensor you're gonna get all of that so this is an example of putting the new Kato two times on a 16 by 9 sensor. So it's just on a FX3 right now. But as you can see, this is what your kind of final extraction would be. So, you know, not saying that you shouldn't do it. You totally can. But again, you'd be kind of wasting a lot of that resolution here on the sides um, when you throw this on a 16 by 9 sensor. So something like a 1.5, like the Remus, would be much better suited for something like for this camera. I love having these kind of newer anamorphics as an option too, especially kind of based on our kind of current lineup of work. We're always used to doing either the traditional commercial or the typical corporate work where it's just like, you know, it's spherical. Not to say that it's boring, but sometimes it's boring. And so, so being able to throw on kind of an easily accessible two times or 1.5 times squeeze is, and to have that kind of funky anamorphic character is always kind of a breath of fresh air, so. Yeah, you, you bring up a good point because a lot of people are in the corporate world and they want to add a little bit of character, but they're a little scared to like go full on. What I always tell people is you just crop in and stop down and you'll mitigate a little bit of that like crazy waterfall bokeh. And I bet corporate won't even know that you're on anamorphic, but you will and it'll just give it a little cinematic yeah. flair. Or they'll say, is that the lens or is the lens soft or is that just the lens? Does it look a little soft? Or is that just how the lens looks? Okay, so obviously Aperture has their new Infinimat, which everyone's talking about. Really cool. They have a lot of different sizes and it's basically an inflatable air mattress that you can kind of rig anywhere you want. But I think what is most interesting to me is their new Citus Link Pro and Citus One. So this little box is actually a way for us to interface with other third-party lighting fixtures. And I remember when they first kind of unveiled the Citus Link Pro and the idea of being able to control third-party manufacturers and so now this is basically what that's come to and it's cool because you can have up to four of the Citus One modules and you can have so basically each one of these is a universe you can link them together and these communicate with the iPad and then your other lighting fixtures communicate with this and so this becomes the bridge to communicate with all your other lights so this is super cool it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse because again I tried to primarily stick in my DP lane and I try to leave a lot of this stuff for my gaffer. But it is really cool because this, the whole idea of Cytosync Pro is kind of just being an easier barrier to entry 
for people that are just starting out into getting into the world of wireless control, wireless DMX. And honestly, is a big reason why I didn't really get into that world is because I didn't want to get into all these different, you know, radio modules, rat packs, all that stuff. I just, again, wanted to have my gaffer focus on all that. Well, I can focus on the image-based storytelling that I do. So this is super cool. And the Citus ones are available now. The app is currently in beta. And basically, it's going to transition into being taking over just Citus Link in general. So the new Citus Link Pro will be the new standard. And there's basically going to be an in-app purchase that you can make. And that will allow you to use this and control other lighting fixtures. So super neat from Aperture. All right, so I'm here at Nanlux. Obviously, I love using Nanlux fixtures because their high-powered LEDs are some of the best on the market. And so I obviously have the 2400B, which I did a video on earlier. But new is their new Fresnel. And it's actually motorized and designed for the 2400B just because the COB is so large. So it's all new Fresnel. And the cool thing about it is that it's motorized, so you can kind of control it a few different ways. You can either use this new interface kind of right here on the side. You can control the flood spot that way. Uh, you can use the app, or the kind of cool thing is, since it kind of communicates through the electronic contacts of the mount, you can actually use it over uh, wireless DMX and control the Fresnel here. So right now, you can see it's full flat, at, or sorry, full spot at 15 degrees, and I can adjust it all the way to full flood to 46 degrees. And so you can kind of see it changing there. And it's almost like a really big, fat um, lens gear, and it's just kind of rotating. And, and the cool thing is that it just communicates all directly through the NL mount. So it's really cool. Don't need to plug anything else in. And if for whatever reason you do need to go back to manual control, you can disengage it using these screws here, and then you can manually screw it like you would any other Nanlux for now. So also new is this new projector mount for some of the larger fixtures like the 1200B or the 900C. This is really cool, it's just a big chunk of glass. And there's actually an adapter so you can still use all your old school ETC lenses if you want to. Also new is uh, some additional reflectors for the 2400. So right now they only have the 45 degree, but now you can also get a 30 degree, this kind of big behemoth here or also kind of a wider 60 degree. So lots of kind of cool new accessories for some of these larger units, and I'm probably going to use them. And this is the uh, exit part. So this is Rob, Rob Chato, the best, the best DP cinematographer out there. If y'all need him, hire him, and then I'm his BTS guy, dedicated for life. They already know this. So if you see him, you see me. That's just how this is working from here on out, right? Shake my hand. So from sick. Justin Porter? It's what? That's crazy. That's, That's crazy. That's crazy. We're bringing the energy to every set. All right, don't show up tired because I'm gonna change that. All right, it's good, it's good. Everybody's up here. Crazy. So that was NAV, everyone's leaving now. It was super fun being able to see what I was able to see. Again, it was a little bit tricky because I was working kind of in the middle of it. So I didn't really get to explore some of the floors as much as I really wanted to, but there were kind of a few standout things that I was able to capture. But if you were here this week and you did stop me and say hi, just know that I really appreciate you and it was super fun meeting all of you and kind of hearing your stories and how some of my content has helped you. So again, I really appreciate it. And until the next one, I'll see you next time.